So the original plan wasn't to have me um, speaking at this point, so um, my preparation has been minimal, um, as some of you might have noticed, probably while I was sitting there. Um, I suppose there's a message, David is caught in traffic, he probably should have pulled the train and he might be here, but um, nevertheless, well, he, he, will, he will be here, so um, we, can, we can perhaps ask him that. Look, I've, um, I want to talk about transport from a, uh, a very local point of view, rather than um, thinking of it from a, um, a broader policy perspective. I think David will talk about that, and he has just arrived. But um, from, a, from, a local, from a local point of view, we are all experiencing the difficulties that a growing population is, uh, is presenting us with. Now, it's been mentioned several times, it's something we have to cope with. Um, and I think we have to look at transport in a, in a very holistic way. The old argument that, well, it's either public transport or it's roads and cars um, is, is, is oversimplifying what is a, a pretty complex problem. So I think we have to look at what are we going to do to ensure that road users and people who choose to use the road and choose to or have to go to work uh, via a car or have to use a car or a vehicle to get around during the day, how are they going to do so efficiently and effectively and get from point A to point B? And how are people who choose to use public transport and can avail themselves of tr public transport going to get the very best in, in service, reliability, efficiency and connectivity from that? They're the things we have to work, work with. Now, in, in, in this area, in the, in the seat of Morty Alec and, and Karen, we're very fortunate to have a strong basis of public transport in the in the in the rail line now. You know, every election the the Frankston rail line is a topic of, of hot discussion for one reason and another. But I think as a base, we have really something very strong to work with, and and uh, and its and its patronage of that rail line is uh, is exceptional every day for many of us. I think one of the challenges we have is ensuring that people can get to that rail line and use that rail line. I think it's one of the fundamental challenges. And I, whilst we, we are looking to the future and looking to what's going to happen in 20 and 30 years, and that's um, anyone in government should be doing, we have to solve today's real problems. And, and there are real problems and we, we can't ignore them. So we have a group of people who choose or have to drive to the station at this point. Now, one of the things that um, I come across very often is the fact that people can't park at the station. And that has to be addressed. Now, there are some people who will say, well, look, um, if, we, if we don't have any parking, uh, that will discourage people from driving to the station. It won't. What it'll mean is they'll go and park in side streets and the residential amenity of those people who live in the proximity of the station um, will be, uh, it'll be to their detriment. So we have to be practical and say that there are a number of people for one reason or another are going to drive to the station and we have to facilitate parking. Now, there is, without going into multi-storey outlandish um, type developments, there is and, and does exist plans where we can expand um, and utilise some of the land available to create, to create some local parking. Um, there seems to be a reluctance to do that, and I know a couple of years ago, PTV were uh, were very keen on that on that program. Um, less so now, but I think it's something that should be pursued and should be addressed. Of course, we do want to encourage people to take other forms of public transport to the station, um, and and the most obvious one is buses. And I think buses hold the key to um, to I think maximising the potential of our of our public transport network. And Tim Richardson and I have often joked about uh, the fact that when you look at many of the buses travelling around this area, there's not a lot of people on them. And why is that? And I think we have to address that. And I think we have to have a strong program and working with the relevant um, um, bus companies and, and PTV to ensure that we maximise the use of that form of transport. Because if we don't, uh, the problems we're facing now are just going to become worse and be exacerbated over a period of time. Certainly, we should be aiming to connect whatever form of transport it is, whether it's the, whether it's the rail network, um, whether it's the road network. There's got to be, there's got to be a connection. It can't, you know, we can't have freeways that end in a set of traffic lights as we have in the past. One of the most important things is to have an honest 
and open discussion with the community, and I think that applies to everything. It's not always the case, unfortunately, but it should be. The community want to be involved, and as, as um, people in decision-making roles, we should welcome their input, uh, and we should, we should engage, and we should come up with, with decisions where people have a... Um... As I said, I didn't, um, I didn't prepare um, a lengthy, uh, a lengthy um, piece on what I should say. I think, um, in summary of my, my points, it's, it's parking at, uh, at stations and it's access to stations through public transport. It's a reliable rail system. Um, Obviously, grade separations are something that's universally supported. Um, I think originally starting off as a, as a road project, obviously, because I, you know, we don't see many trains stop at boom gates. It's, it's cars that are, it's congestion, and it's the, um, it's the efficiency of the road system that's uh, the benefits from the, those crossing removals. And of course, there is the safety aspect too, because we've all been aware of, I think most of the crossings along here have at one stage or another um, had very, very unfortunate um, accidents and fatalities. So I think um, that that type of that type of work, I I, I don't think uh, anyone is going to believe that that's not uh, something that should be carried into the future. So as far as I'm concerned tonight, the most important part is is when we get to the next bit, and that's your input. Um, and I would encourage you to to ask questions, um, as was. Um, said earlier on, as Tom said earlier on, if we can keep the questions short and sharp and we can get as, and get as many answers in, I think that's what we're all looking for. But I think um, everybody sitting up here will really be looking forward to what input you have uh, and the questions you have, whether it's about roads, whether it's about, uh, whether it's about uh, the public transport network um, or something else that we may not have mentioned. Um, but uh, thank you very much for hearing me. Uh, look forward to your questions.